So one of the first important steps is, of course, logging in. And part of the upgrade within the planning uh, platform here has been that planning ha is in the process of sort of being removed from uh, its prior, uh, prior home within the Compliance Assist tool. So this means, uh, you know, right now your old way of getting access will still be functioning, but we would like you to think about transitioning to logging in from your main Campus Labs homepage as campus or as planning is now sort of its own tool in the system. So uh, above you'll see the uh, URL for your overarching Campus Labs landing or homepage and what you'll be looking for when you log in with those same uh, credentials that you are used to uh, logging in with on other campus platforms. Uh, what you'll see is a uh, tile that says planning. That's really the only important thing for you to be able to see and access there, at least for the scope of today's session. Um, so again, shifting a little bit the way that you're accessing planning and taking it out of the Compliance Assist site uh, and sort of suite of tools as a part of this overarching upgrade. All right. So today we're going to be walking through a uh, live site demo, really just showcasing the overarching ins and outs of, of the tool and navigating. Of course, Matt has already gone through and talked about some of the sort of why, and I will really just be thinking, uh, taking a look at the how here. So one of the first things um, that I'll want to do is just sort of orient you to the overarching site structure. So when you now log in to planning, uh, you are going to be taken to a new main kind of home base here, which is the dashboard. In the, if you're familiar with the previous interface of planning, um, prior, you would initially be taken to an announcements page, and then you could navigate to the dashboard within the site. Within this upgraded interface, we've really merged the concept of the announcements page and the dashboard to hopefully make your first initial entry into the site a little bit more meaningful for you. So we still have the announcement content here up in the right-hand corner. You'll also see all of the active plans that exist for your institution within the time period here. And then front and center, there's going to be some information that as you continue to build and add content, or potentially if you already have certain uh, pieces of content built out into the planning site, um, hopefully it's going to be a, a, a bit more meaningful of an initial experience in the site. So we have these three main tabs here within the dashboard, and I want to take a moment to outline what exactly those mean. So first, we see the My Items tab. That is going to showcase, again, within the context of the time period that we're looking at, at the in the dashboard, this is going to showcase any items that you have created. So any initiatives that you yourself have added to the site will show up there, um, in this case, within the context of 2018-19. As I actually go through the process of adding some content here to the site today, we'll get to see that actually updated um, with some more information in real time. Um, next, we have the Responsible Items tab. And we'll take a look at this functionality. You have the ability to either assign an individual or potentially assign yourself as a responsible party for a particular item. So certainly something that I would recommend uh, contemplating how you might want to take advantage of that um, within the tool, if that's going to help you particularly manage your workflow and processes, especially if you have a group of folks coming in to contribute content or update initiatives, or perhaps somebody who created an initiative, but then somebody else who needs to kind of uh, follow up and uh, complete that cycle. Next, more broadly speaking, we have a contributor tab here, and that is going to, um, actually show you just broadly speaking content uh, that you have the ability to access and edit. So a little bit broader than the first two tabs, again, uh, uh, my items being the main uh, content that you have yourself created, responsible items, we'll take a look at that. You have the ability to assign that and it's going to be a bit more of a straightforward process uh, within the site to go about that. So merging that dashboard space and the announcements space into a more meaningful centralized home base. Now, if you were previously working uh, within 
the planning tool, which it sounds like a lot of folks have experience in the previous interface, I hope what you'll find is that now we really are taking up more space on the page for you to actually craft and compose your content, and that we've really streamlined the navigation. So, so I think the main aspects that you'll probably notice as we move forward today are one, we have removed any sort of small pop-outs um, from the screens and um, gotten rid of sort of that pop-out component. So everything is really a full screen composing experience for you. We've streamlined the navigation. So you now have these three main areas of the site instead of just having sort of tabs upon tabs upon tabs and sub tabs. Uh, and um, also autosave was certainly something that was high on a lot of folks uh, list of um, desired capabilities within the planning tool. And so you will also find that we now have autosave in place as well. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at actually adding content to a department plan and what those steps will look like. I think you'll find that there are some familiar aspects of navigating through the tool, just with this upgraded sort of streamlined look and feel. So um, since I don't have any of my items or are these items for me to work on, the first place I'm going to navigate to is this plans area. The plans area is where you're going to go to really work on and actually contribute content or build out content related to any of the ongoing plans in your site. In this case, really focusing on the departmental plans, but also as well, the strategic plan content is housed there. So I'm going to go ahead and select plans. And what I'll see here under this My Units tab is the area in which I have actually been afforded and assigned access and permissions. So that organizational unit where your permissions and role lives will be uh, located under this My Units tab. Up here, you have the ability to navigate through the various fiscal year time periods in the site by selecting the appropriate designation from that dropdown, if it's not already on that. And you also have the ability then to navigate to the particular plan you're wanting to look at, work on, or contribute to. Now you'll uh, hopefully remember that part of your departmental plan uh, process is that you will need to also connect your particular items up to the institutional strategic plan priorities. So I am going to go ahead and first navigate over to the strategic plan area to showcase how you can go about just reviewing that institutional strategic plan content. So I selected the strategic plan here, and then I'm able to see the actual components of that strategic plan. We have a vision, a mission, the value statement, and then the various priorities. If you want to be able to see all of these on one page, uh, you absolutely can expand your view here if, you, if you're limited to the number of items. Um, you also have the ability to take advantage of the filter uh, if you would like to zero in um, easily on just that strategic priority level. That was something that was a capability within the previous tool. It's just not a feature or capability that was necessarily showcased or surfaced or easy to uh, understand or navigate to prior. So you can open up any of these particular strategic priorities, and then you'll be able to see this content in a sort of read-only format. So again, if you're uncertain as you're approaching planning for uh, the next, or planning for the future and planning for that uh, 2020 time period, uncertain of what priorities you might want to connect to or want to just sort of brush up on what these priorities are, um, then certainly I would recommend coming in and taking a look at them prior to uh, diving more deeply into your uh, departmental initiatives. If you want to see all of this content in a bit more of a, a reader-friendly view, there is this option to look at the read view of this item. And that way it will be a little bit easier to actually navigate through the pieces of text that are there. All right, so that was looking at the strategic plan content for review. And again, then to navigate over to a new uh, plan area to contribute content, you're simply going to 
select the appropriate plan from the dropdown. So I'll select department plan. I have my unit where I'm uh, set up as just an example user for the day, and I'm going to go ahead and click on that unit. And initially, I'll be able to see all of the content that exists thus far. Again, I'm in 2018-19. So first we'll look at updating content, and then second we'll take a look at actually adding new content in a future year. So to modify any one of these items that you have already created, you'll simply click on the title um, to navigate into an edit screen. Again, you'll notice instead of having a small pop out, you're able to take advantage of the whole screen to then come in and make any updates or modifications to the content that's been entered thus far. You'll see instead of having the uh, instructions as eye bubbles that you hover over, instructional content is now surfaced just below the name of the particular field. Um, so you don't have to kind of toggle back and forth. You'll simply see any helpful instructional text in line right below the particular field. If you make any adjustments or changes to content, and of course I'll uh, remove any changes that I make, you're going to see that there is a green check mark that is going to appear as you move along that indicates that your changes are being saved as you go. So you no longer have to save early and save often. It's simply going to follow with you and save automatically here. Um, so certainly something and also note the particular timestamp for those changes. We're utilizing a new text editor as well. So it's a bit a more of an updated, modern and streamlined text editor that exists here for you, but still with a lot of that uh, common functionality. So you still have the ability to insert images or graphics as necessary. You can create hyperlinks to other websites and web pages. And you also still have the ability to shift over into a paste as text mode, which is still our recommendation for if you're copying and pasting text from another source. So whether that's a website or a PDF or a Word document that you have, you know, of course, we don't want you to just retype content into these fields if it already exists. But I certainly would recommend and encourage you to switch over to that paste as plain text mode. Uh, that way you're going to ensure you're going to have a very cohesive end result and final product there with everything staying in the correct font types and sizes and without sort of mismatched formatting. You still have the ability and the particular fields to upload files and organize them into folders if you would like to do so. And so again, you can come in and make these modifications, updates, and changes. And it will save as you go. You also have the ability to look at a read view of your items if you would like to see a singular item or print or save a copy of a particular item. So you can print a particular item. You can share it with somebody who also has access to this content. And it will send them an email of this item. You can assign somebody as a responsible individual. So if I go ahead and say I'm responsible for finishing and completing this objective, I can just simply select that my test account is the responsible party here with one click of a button. And now that item will show up on my dashboard under that responsible items tab. Over in the related tab, I can review and examine any connections via the related items functionality that have been established. So in this case, this particular initiative is supporting some student affairs department initiatives as well as a, a college strategic priority. And when we add new items, we'll take a look at establishing those connections from scratch as well. With the history here, you'll see a timestamp and information about who was in last modifying content. So hopefully you'll find that these are familiar fields and familiar content that you're supplying, but a little bit more real estate to allow you to compose and craft your content and update this information along with that helpful autosave functionality. So when I'm done, I can either, if I'm all the way at the bottom here, I can select done to go back to more of my table of contents view, 
or I can always just simply select that back button as well, which tends to be my preferred way to navigate through the tool. So here again is that department plan information. We are in the default time period of 2018-19. And I just want to take a moment to orient you to what we're seeing on the page here. So we are seeing the type of item this is. We are seeing, which is a department initiative, we're seeing that number information. These up and down arrows are now present and showcasing that this item has been connected to another item. And since I assign myself as a responsible party, Next to the start and end dates for this fiscal year, I am seeing this uh, individual or sort of outline of a person here, which indicates that somebody has been assigned as a responsible party. So there's a bit more information here that's surfaced um, than in the previous interface, and also, again, just taking up a lot more space and real estate on uh, the screen here. You still have the ability to filter if you would like to filter either by progress values or the particular template that you're wanting to take a look at. You can select a particular sort um, if you want to see items in order of progress value or if you want to see if content in, um, by start and end dates or something of that nature, you certainly can modify your sort. Um, so those are all sort of the options that you have here in terms of navigating and looking at the content here within the department plan area. So shifting gears from modifying existing content to taking a look at adding new content to plan for 2019-2020, you'll simply go to this uh, fiscal year kind of date picker dropdown, and you can select, in this case, fiscal year 19-2020. Some of you may have already completed this content, but I will walk through the steps of adding new content here as well. Similar to the previous interface, it is an item dropdown to, that you will make a selection from, and that will create an item in the site. So you can select from either your department vision and mission or department initiative. Uh, once you click either of these options, that item is created within the site. Um, so it's a little bit different than in the previous interface where you had to at least, you know, select save one time for it to create, uh, for it to really create that item. Now, as soon as you select department initiative, you have added a new department initiative to your, uh, to your particular plan area in the time period specified. So I'll go ahead and select department initiative. I've now created a new initiative and I can go about adding the appropriate number identifier information following in line with the instructions that are here. I'm just going to call this five test. Again, you'll see that I have these green check marks saving as I go. And just be sure to take note of the helpful instructional information that has been housed here um, beneath these fields to guide you along through this process. You'll be able to update this information again if you're copying and pasting. You'll simply go to this edit drop down and switch to paste as text and then you can do your regular control C, control V from there. You'll progress through the familiar, hopefully, fields that you have completed in the past, entering information um, as necessary for this planning stage. And you'll also go about establishing the appropriate connection up to an institutional strategic priority. To go about establishing that connection, you will navigate over to the Related tab. And you'll see we are housing the related items information in a bit more of a visually oriented and hopefully somewhat intuitive way. So we see where this item is within sort of the hierarchy of these relationships. So we're going to establish a connection up to an institutional strategic goal because we are sort of the smaller piece of the puzzle talking about what the broad priority that we are connecting to, or the larger priority that we are associated with. So I will select Add Supports. I will navigate over to the strategic plan because that's the plan that I'm connecting to. And then I'll be able to establish the appropriate connection to a particular priority. So again, another reason why I recommend um, 
you know, making sure that you are familiar with those priorities ahead of time so you can feel comfortable and confident making that particular designation and selection when you're in this window. So I'll simply click on this plus sign button and I have now created and established that relationship to a college strategic priority. When I'm all set, I'll simply go back to my plan item and I can continue adding information and content here. Or if I'm all set, I will simply navigate back to my overarching, sort of more table of contents view of all of my initiatives and department plan content. Any of the reports that you had access to previously, you still have the ability to generate within the site for your area. So certainly I would recommend taking a look at the report format and creating a report uh, within the site. So you have the same reports that are available to you. It's just a little bit of a different experience to go about actually generating them. So you oh, can, Colleen. yep. Can you um, show how to run the department plan report? Yep, absolutely. So the here, common plan report, just if I could real quick, mm -hmm. that gives you, just like it says on the screen, it gives you your entire plan in one place. So right now when you're in planning, working on items, you see you have your vision, mission, it's one thing, then you have initiative one, it's another thing, initiative two, it's another thing. You get it all on, on one page, a nice formatted report, this is the one you would like. So I'll go ahead and either, if this is the, you know, exact time period that I'm wanting to look at. So 1718 is the default here. I could just click on view report. From the drop down, I also have the ability to customize the dates or opt to see this as a CSV format. I'm just going to go ahead and select view report. And it's going to provide me with this initial screen and showcase content here from again in a comprehensive all-in-one document and from there you'll be able to either print and if you're in google chrome or firefox which are recommended browsers you can also you know print to pdf to save a copy to your hard drive and you also have the ability to uh, share this report as well. So if you want to send this to another user in the site who has access to your area um, or another individual that has been working on completing this content for your department, then you can also send this report to them um, by looking for them at their username or their first name or last name, and it will send an email with a link to this particular report. So that's an, a new piece of functionality within the site. If you um, are interested and you have the appropriate level of access to create a new report, you would select this add report option. If that's something you're interested in exploring how to create your own reports in the site, um, I would certainly recommend attending one of the regularly scheduled trainings that we host that will walk through all of the different steps and considerations for creating and crafting uh, unique reports or our department reports as well. And I'll take a look at those offerings and some of our support uh, features here in just a moment. So just to uh, retrace my steps here in the site. Initially, when I first logged in, I was taken to this dashboard and announcements kind of merged home, ba home base for me as a user. I'll see the announcements content here. I can select more to see the full extent of this information. And go back. Then here in the center of the page, we have the My Items area. So any content that you yourself have created within the time period designated. There's responsible items, which now I see that particular initiative that I assigned my test account as the responsible party for. And then contributor items, uh, which is going to just more broadly show content, uh, editable content. So here in this central page, uh, where, with this new responsible item that's been added here, if, I, if this is the item that I'm coming into the site to update and work on, I can simply just click into this item and edit it from this screen. So potentially, eventually, uh, like, didn't intend to rhyme there. Uh, you might be able to simply access the dashboard, click on the particular item you want to edit, and that's you know as far as you navigate through the planning tool for a given purpose or for a given uh, session. But of course, if you want to see the full extent of plan content, you want to add new content and information, then you'll navigate over to this plans area here within the site. 
where you'll see the unit where you have been afforded access and permissions under this My Units tab. You can navigate to the institutional view also if you want to either search for your unit or sort of traverse the organizational tree structure to navigate to your unit. Up in the top left-hand corner, you can designate the particular time period that you're wanting to navigate to and the particular plan you're wanting to either review or work on. And then from there, if you open up any given item, you'll automatically be taken into this edit and editing and composing interface where you can go about completing uh, your or updating your 2018-19 plan content with con everything saving as you go. I'm going to go ahead and remove myself as the responsible party here. And then if you want to create new content and uh, work on your projections for 1920, you'll navigate to that time period. And then on this plan item dropdown, you can select the type of item you want to create. Again, as soon as you make a designation and you click this button, you have created an initiative. So if you're just wanting to kind of explore um, and do not and aren't necessarily wanting to create an initiative, but you just wanted to see what the form and the template looks like in this interface, then you can absolutely just scroll down. And when you're at the bottom, if this is not actually an item that you wanted to create, you'll just want to be sure and delete this item so it's not, pardon me, cluttering or taking up space uh, in your plan area. I will also go ahead and remove my example initiative here. Which I, through the related tab, connected my item up to a strategic plan priority. So those are the main steps of navigating and accomplishing you know, various tasks within the upgraded planning interface. I hope you are uh, finding that it is a familiar, somewhat familiar uh, steps and you know, familiar content at least. Um, so hopefully you'll you'll enjoy some of the changes and upgrade updates and and you'll, it'll be a pretty intuitive process to sort of learn how to navigate in this uh, sort of streamlined view. As I mentioned, if you are interested in potentially learning about uh, creating your own report definitions, I would recommend signing up for one of our ongoing training offerings. And you can see that content as well as our connect with our support team and see some of our support article content by clicking on your name in the top right hand corner and then navigating to support. Here you'll be taken to the Planning Help Center where you can look for articles, uh, browse the library of already previously recorded videos. And you also have the ability to chat with somebody on our support team that's located with us here in Buffalo, uh, as well as call or email somebody here. Uh, we have this series of ongoing trainings that you can see by clicking on this training tab at the top. And the planning report creation in particular is the one I referenced that will showcase how to go about setting up your own reports if you're interested in creating additional reports that uh, in addition to the ones that are already sort of there for you and have been created uh, on your behalf to generate at, at, as you need. So I will go ahead and pause the recording here and open it up to any questions that folks have.